Hello, everybody. My name is Shreeni Vasan. I'm a research scientist at IBM Research New York, and I'm here to introduce the Iterate Project to the Key Native community today. Uh, the Iterate Project is made possible by contributions by a number of wonderful people. I've listed their names here, and this is a growing list, and um, hopefully it will continue to grow. Okay, so what is Iterate? Iterate is an open source platform for cloud native release automation and experimentation. And as developers of Kubernetes apps or machine learning models, uh, we have a, uh, often we have a number of goals. Maybe we want to, in a Canary test, we want to validate our Canary release, Canary version is satisfying service level objectives or maybe you're doing a A-B test or an ABN experiment, and you want to identify the best version. You have a number of versions of your application. You want to compare them and maybe pick the one that maximizes the business objective of interest to you, maximizes user engagement, maximizes revenue, minimizes cost, whatever. Pick the best version. And in doing these types of releases, in doing these types of experiments, we also want to protect the end user experience. So if a version is satisfying SLOs, maybe we want to shift traffic to it gradually, but if it's not satisfying SLOs, we want to minimize its exposure to end users. And maybe we want to bring in other safety mechanisms like traffic shaping, traffic mirroring and segmentation to limit exposure of versions to users before they are fully rolled up. And we also want to safely promote and roll back versions if necessary. Um, this is the point of Iterate. Iterate makes it possible. Iterate gives you a number of features that makes it possible to achieve these goals automatically as part of your releases. Um, so here are, are a few key features that are available today for Knative app developers. And we are gonna see uh, many of these features as part of the demos. Um, but you, you can start using these features today as part of your Knative releases. Uh, the number one feature here is a um, uh, Kubernetes custom resource called experiment. And you can use this experiment resource to declaratively specify what do you want to achieve as part of the experiment or as part of your validation task or as part of your release task. Um, in particular, you can use this experiment to say that you want to do a conformance test. <laughs> this is a different conformance test than what we heard about before. This is really about validating SLOs uh, using metrics. And you can do a canary test where you have two versions and you're comparing two versions. You can progressively shift traffic to a particular version of your application and um, based on how it performs with respect to metrics, uh, you can uh, specify SLOs or SLIs uh, based on metrics. And you can also bring in more, you know, integrate more advanced uh, features like dark launches, traffic mirroring and segmentation, which we will see today. And you can also integrate experiments with app configuration tools like Helm and Customize. So this is, these are some features at a glance, and these are things that you can start using today. All right, so let's dive into our first demo. This is a conformance testing demo for a key native app. And once again, by conformance testing, what we mean is that your app, your, this version of your app satisfies SLOs that are specified within the experiment. Um, this is the scenario that we are uh, going to demo. Um, you have a single version of your Knative application. So we will see that this is actually a Knative revision. Uh, in, in Knative versions correspond to revisions. So you have a Knative revision. And you know the picture says that it's really a production version. So it's receiving user traffic and it's serving requests from users. So in, in reality, you can do the step conformance test either with a production version or in a staging environment. It's really up to you how you, uh, which version you pick to do this experiment on. Um, essentially, as part of a conformance test, you're going to continually validate the version and check if it is going to satisfy SLOs that, are, that you care about. In this experiment, we will specify latency SLOs and we will specify error rate SLOs, but the SLOs can be based on any metrics that are available to you. And this is how the demo is about to unfold. So manually, I'm going to launch a Knative service with a single revision. 
And then I will launch the iterate conformance experiment. And iterate is going to automate several steps for me. So it is going to, first of all, it's going to do some basic checking in the beginning. It's going to verify that, you know, the Kineda version actually exists. It's not a, it's not a non-existent revision. And all the metrics that I specify within the experiment, they actually exist. And uh, then it's going to periodically query the metrics backend, in this case, Prometheus. It's going to fetch the latency and error rate metrics, and it's going to evaluate the version. And if it satisfies the SLOs, it is going to declare it as a winner. If it doesn't satisfy the SLOs, then it's just going to report that it, does, it doesn't satisfy your objectives. Uh, this is a very simple introductory experiment to, for us to get started with Iterate and Kineda. There are more advanced demos coming up shortly. So let's head over. Everything that I am going to talk about today is documented here as part of Iterate.tools. So you can try out this experiment at your home in a couple of minutes. So let me go to the conformance testing. As I said, I'm going to launch my Kineda application. Oh, so I'm gonna say that I already set up a few things here, right? So obviously I have a local Kubernetes cluster and it's running um, Kineda and it's also has got in Iterate installed. So some of the setup has been taken care of in the background already so that I can get started with the demo. So I've gone ahead and launched this Kinative service. It's a very simple service taken from Kinative tutorials. I have a sample app v1 and it's a blue version of this application. That is a service that I'm going to conformance test. Of course, in a real environment, in a production environment, your service is probably receiving user requests, real user requests. But you know, in this demo, I'm just going to simulate user requests by generating a few requests myself using a using this tool called Fodio. All right, so I'm about to create the iterate experiment, but let's take a quick look at what this experiment is going to do. So first of all, I specified that the target of my experiment is this particular Kinative service. So sample app service in the default namespace. And if we dive a little bit deeper, I'm specifically saying within that service, there is a revision called sample app v1, pick that up. That is what we are going to do our experiment with. And we uh, want to, uh, validate this version by verifying it satisfies these objectives. So these are the objectives that I would like my version to satisfy. Its mean latency needs to be within 50 milliseconds. Its stay latency needs to be within 100 milliseconds and its error rate needs to be within 1%. If I see these things happening, then I would say, yes, your version is great. Otherwise, well, not me, but iterate is going to say your version is great. Otherwise, iterate is going to declare that your version is not satisfying objectives. And uh, there are other things. Uh, there is a initialization action that I'm specifying here. So it's going to do, as I said, some sanity checks, whether this version and service actually exists, whether these metrics actually exist. Metrics is also a Kubernetes CRD that Iterate actually defines. So it's going to verify all these things for you automatically. Uh, let's go ahead and launch this experiment. Okay, experiment is created. Now we want to see what this experiment is actually doing. Uh, there is a little uh, uh, CLI tool that Iterate provides called Iterate CDL. You can use it to periodically see how the experiment is proceeding and uh, what the experiment is reporting back. Uh, the experiment looks like it's just getting started. So there is no data coming back. We'll look into uh, what is coming back, but you know, experiment itself is a Kubernetes resource. So we can just kubectl get it. Uh, we are seeing that there are three iterations of the experiment that are completed. Going back to the experiment, I missed one part. So the duration of the experiment says that there are 10 iterations of the experiment. And in between each uh, iteration, there is a 10 second gap. So periodically iterate is doing this metrics fetch followed by evaluation of the version. Uh, looks like it's now beginning to get some metrics from the metrics backend. Uh, there are a few requests that have gone to your version and it is reporting back the mean latency, the tail latency, error rate, and your version is doing great. All the objectives are satisfied. 
and looks like it's, it's doing well. So as I said, this is a very, very simple conformance experiment, but it already demonstrates how Iterate uh, validates your application and your application version in this, in this uh, simple setting. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this experiment and move on to hopefully what is a bit more interesting experiment. So in between these demos, I need to do a little cleanup so that my demo environment is fit for the next step. All right, so let's go back and look at our next demo. Here's what we're going to do in the next demo. We're going to do a Canary release of a Knative application. And once again, uh, so in a Canary release, you obviously have a baseline version and you have a candidate version that you're Canary releasing. Uh, once again, we are going to do validation of these versions. We are going to check if they satisfy the SLOs that you specify in the experiment. But this time we are going to progressively shift traffic to the candidate if it satisfies the SLOs. And at the end of the experiment, assuming the candidate is doing well and it's found to be a good one, not a problem, it, it satisfies everything that you want it to satisfy, we will promote it. In other words, it will, it will become the new baseline. It will essentially take over all of the traffic. That's, what, uh, the that's how the experiment ideally should end. So this is the picture. Uh, once again, we have user traffic in the beginning, candidate is going to get a very small percentage of the traffic, but hopefully it is going to, we are going to continually iterate, is going to continually validate it. And iterate is going to certify that this is a good candidate. And as it does so, hopefully we will see iterate shifting the traffic from the baseline to the candidate version automatically. And for this traffic shifting, it is actually going to use a uh, Knata service resource. It's going to use the traffic spec as part of the service resource to do this traffic shifting. And as I said, in the end, it's going to automatically promote your um, candidate version because it would emerge as the winner in this experiment. It would have satisfied all the SLOs and it will end up being the one and only revision. The other baseline will be garbage collected by Knata. All right, so once again, this is how the experiment is going to unfold. I'm going to launch the two versions, launch the experiment, and iterate is going to do all of that magic for me. A verify, um, progressively shift traffic, and declare a winner, and promote at the end of the experiment. All right, so let's head over to this experiment. Um, all right. So a lot of the setup steps, Kubernetes cluster, iterate, Knative install, everything is done already. So I'm going to go ahead straight to this step where I'm creating Knative app versions. So this is once again, the simple a sample application with a blue version and then upgrading it to a green version and in the beginning, the green version is not going to receive any traffic. It's just, you know, deployed, but not receiving traffic at the moment. That's how the service specification uh, is specified. Let's send some requests. Once again, it's using a 40-year job to synthetic, synthetically generate some requests and send it to these versions. Let's look at the experiment before launching it. There are a few other things going on. So once again, I have a target of the experiment and the target is my sample app key native service in the default namespace. But this time I have more things, more details specified for the version. So I have, first of all, not one, but two. I have a baseline version and a candidate version. A baseline is sample app v1. Baseline is just a way for me to see if anything goes wrong, not able to do the experiment properly even, or candidate is not working out, just go back to the baseline. So it's a, it's a fallback mechanism. So baseline is my sample app v1 and revision, the candidate revision is sample app v2. Oh, sorry about the background noise. Maybe I'll move, head over to a different space. Right. Hopefully the background noise will subside. So uh, that's about the versions themselves. Once again, I'm using the same um, criteria, I'm using the same objectives, mean latency, pay latency, and error rate metrics. And um, 
here is the action that I'm specifying as part of the experiment for doing the version promotion. So when the experiment finishes, I can simply use a kubectl apply command. It's not me who is using it. It's the iterate experiment, which is automating this step for me. It's going to use this kubectl apply command and launch the appropriate version. If the version that needs to be promoted is the baseline, it will launch the baseline. It will kubectl apply the baseline uh, manifest. Otherwise, it will kubectl apply the candidate manifest. So you end up promoting the right version depending upon which version ends up as the winner during the experiment. All right, so this is the experiment. Let's go ahead and launch the experiment. All right, experiment created. Once again, let's use iterate CTL to start monitoring how the experiment is unfolding. Nothing has happened so far, it's just starting up. Uh, let's look at the status of the experiment, the stage of the experiment here by doing a CDL watch of the experiment. A couple of iterations of the experiment are over. And let's also watch the traffic in the service itself. All right. So, okay. So this is the output from iterate CDL. There are four four iterations of the experiment that are complete. And apparently it's still not getting metrics for any of these versions. Uh, let's see, maybe we just need to wait. Sometimes there's a Prometheus scraping process that goes on in the background. And uh, sometimes it just takes time to scrape the metrics. So what we see here in the status is that the, Traffic shift is held at 95.5, right? So you're not actually seeing traffic shifting from baseline to revision to the candidate because you know we are not getting any metrics for the baseline or the candidates. So traffic is actually held at 95% for the baseline and candidate at 5%. I wonder what's going on. Unavailable, unavailable, unavailable. Hmm. So um, I want to check one quick thing. All right. So there was a downtime with Q.io, which is actually I'm using a Red Hat operator for launching Prometheus pods. And up until last night, this uh, the, <laughs> the container registry was down at Quay. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with it. So the experiment actually is finishing, but it's not finishing the way I want it to actually finish. I was hoping to see some metrics here and traffic shifting uh, to the candidate, but that it didn't quite unfold as I was hoping it would. But you can see that if the candidate is not validated, the other rollback mechanism actually kicked it. The experiment is over. And Iterate has actually gone ahead and rolled back the candidate. 100% of the traffic is now going back to the baseline because it could not confidently declare the candidate as being the winner in this experiment. That's what you're saying. That's not what I was thinking we will see, but that's exactly what happened during the experiment. So let's go ahead and see if we can proceed to the next experiment where maybe we will see something else. So the actually the candidate uh, uh, winning as part of the experiment. I'm going to go ahead and do one cleanup step here. All right. Experiment has been cleaned up and the services have been cleaned up. All right, so let me go to the next experiment, the next demo that I want to show you, which is scalar release of a key native app for a targeted user segment, right? So once again, there is going to be a canary release experiment, but, and then once again, hopefully we will see some progressive traffic shifting in this particular instance. 
Uh, but we are going to segment the traffic and use only a portion of our user base to do the experiment. And this is how the, um, the, the demo scenario looks like. So you have a, once again, you have a baseline version and a candidate version, but we are only going to use traffic from a specific country called Wakanda in our experiment. Uh, all the users from Wakanda, they will be split between the baseline and the candidate during the experiment. But if you are not from Wakanda, then you are going to end up seeing only the baseline. There is the, all the other, the rest of the world is not going to, essentially it's not going to participate in this experiment. It, it has a clean path to the baseline. But if you're from Wakanda, then we have an experiment for you and you will either go to baseline or the candidate uh, based on the traffic split percentage, we will split the traffic from Wakanda. Once again, we have the same SLOs that we want to verify within the, for the uh, baseline and candidate versions. Um, and once again, uh, hopefully we will progressively roll out the candidate, but this time the progressive rollout will happen only for users within Wakanda. As I said, all the other users, they are unaffected by this experiment. Even if the candidate is doing very well, the rest of the users, we don't want the rest of the users to see the candidate version because we want to minimize the exposure. That's the idea. So this time I'm going to go ahead, launch two different key native services. So I'm going to use some STM magic under the covers to do this experiment, right? Because um, the traffic segmentation is a capability that I actually get from Istio virtual services. So I can overlay that on top of the Knative resources that I'm creating to achieve this experiment here. So I'm going to go ahead and create two Knative services. So my two versions here are Knative services, not revisions, but Knative services. And I will split traffic between them based on um, headers. I'll check if a request is from Wakanda. And based on that, I will decide to use it or not uh, within the experiment. And that policy is specified as part of the Istio virtual service. And then I'll launch the experiment and the experiment will once again do the validation and traffic shifting for me. So let's head over and go to our traffic segmentation experiment and create the versions. All right, so I've got my versions. As I said, these are two different um, Knative services, one blue and one green. And let's go ahead and create the Istio virtual service. What is this virtual service saying? So if you look at the virtual service, I have a custom host. If you're you know, doing this in production, you probably have your own host for which you're routing traffic. I have a custom host and I'm saying, if the request for this host comes from a condo, I can split it between the uh, baseline and the candidate version. But if the request for this host is coming from elsewhere other than Wakanda, we just go to the baseline version. It's not going to participate in this experiment. That's what the virtual service is uh, letting me do. Let's go ahead and generate some traffic. And this time the traffic generation is a little bit more involved. So I have traffic coming from Wakanda to my services and I have traffic coming from Gondor to my services. Gondor is just rest of the world. Once again, these are just placeholders, right? You can segment the traffic in any whichever way that issue actually allows you to segment the traffic. It can be based on headers. It can be based on country headers, user headers. It can be based on other parts of the request also. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the iterate experiment. All right, so experiment has been launched. Let's start watching the experiment. Experiment is just starting. Couple of iterations. And let's also watch the 
uh, virtual service in terms of what it's doing with the traffic. Wow. Okay, this time I'm getting some metrics, looking hopeful now. Okay, so I am getting metrics for my baseline version. And yes, the baseline version is satisfying all the SLOs. True, 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 because it's mean latency is within 50 milliseconds, it's state latency is within 100 milliseconds, and it's error rate is zero. And looks like I'm beginning to get some metrics for my candidate versions also. The candidate version is also satisfying all the SLOs that are specified as part of the experiment here. And the experiment is proceeding and traffic is beginning to shift. Um, initially, it was a 595 split between the baseline and the candidate, or between the candidate and the baseline. But now you see the candidate taking on 45% of the traffic and the baseline at 55%. Uh, once again, this is all traffic from within Wakanda. The non-Wakandan users from the rest of the world are just left undisturbed for the purpose of this experiment. All right. Uh -huh. um, uh, you have two more minutes left. I just want to allow a few minutes at the end to to have a conversation about your demo. Perfect timing. Perfect. Uh, so I'm done with all the demos. So you can head over to iterate.tools because there are more demos out there. And for example, you can do a dark launch of your candidate application and you can use traffic mirroring, another of Istio's capabilities to route traffic. And you can do other things like, you know, I showed you Istio networking layer, but, you know, Knative supports other networking layers and you can experiment with Iterate, with Knative, with other networking layers also. Uh, soon, we're gonna be releasing a couple of new releases of Iterate where you will be able to go beyond Prometheus and get metrics from any REST API. And uh, we also are planning to include support for AB and ABN experiments, which I mentioned, but did not demo today. And uh, we also want to enable GitOps experiments, right? Use experiments as part of your GitOps pipelines and CICD pipelines. So you will start seeing more samples along these uh, dimensions. Oh, we do have a KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon Europe 2021 talk. Um, and the Iterate team will be talking about best practices in a Kubernetes experimentation. So if you're attending KubeCon, uh, be sure to check us out there. All right, so you can join us uh, on iterate.tools on our Slack channel workspace, and uh, you can also uh, check out our repos and raise questions or comments there. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Srini. Uh, um... As uh, you were mentioning, you have a, a presentation, right, uh, at KubeCon, and you mentioned to me that you were interested in getting some feedback from the Knative community. So I just wanted to share that with everyone here. There were a ton of comments and some questions in the chat. If this is available to you, uh, can you unmute and maybe start the conversation with a question or comment that you may have for Let's head over. To the chat. Yes, yes, yes. I'm hearing a big echo. So we were trying to answer you know, the questions on the fly tree. So uh, perhaps if there are additional questions. Well, this, this is Max. I, I don't have a question, but I have a comment, which is that I, I love it. And this is very timely. Um, I think we need to, uh, we need to figure out how to, how to use this more. Um, but um, we'll be following up. Um, I guess this is all open source, just to be clear, it's all open source under, um, I'm looking at the repos right now. Uh, the license is, is, uh, it's compatible, right, with, with what we have right now in Canada. At v 2 it's all open source. Uh, it's permissive licensing should be compatible, I believe. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. For Kikon, maybe... use Grafana. It is more visual for people to follow along. Yes, we do have a story for Grafana. Uh, we want to bring 
metrics other than Prometheus metrics into Grafana. So it might take a little bit uh, more time, but yes, we are doing that. I'm just seeing other questions here. Uh, example.com, okay. Right, looks like Fabio already took on many of these questions, all the questions here in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you have more questions or comments, you see part of the reason why we are doing this presentation is to understand the needs of the Canada community, right? So what are the types of release automation pain points and what are the types of experimentation uh, needs and pain points that are worthwhile attacking? So this is an initial presentation, and this is definitely based on our interaction with the Istia community. It's based on our interaction with the KF serving community. But for the Canada community, if there are other comments, concerns, needs, we absolutely want to get that feedback. We want to understand what is useful to build as part of Iterate. So that's definitely the type of feedback which we would uh, benefit a lot from. I, I have the opposite uh, question. Um, what do you want from us? Like, what did you um, find uh, good or what could improve about Knative? Like, to when you were building something like this, um, uh, what, what was what's your kind of feedback to us in the same way? Uh, that's a good question. So internally, when I was demoing it, in fact, to Doug, who is on the call here, his suggestion was that, hey, why not do the traffic segmentation using Canada service instead of using a Istio virtual service? And my answer was that Canada service doesn't support features like that, probably because, you know, Istio does and Canada is meant to work on top of multiple networking layers. So I don't know the answer, but anyway, so some of these features that makes experimentation interesting, that makes experimentation useful, perhaps it's worth considering how to bring that in as part of the Kubernetes service resources uh, going forward. That's probably my top comment that comes to my mind. That is, yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that before for what it's worth. That our current kind of traffic stuff is um, hard to use outside of a demo, like of Knative, like it's hard to actually use it for any anything other than the simple stuff. That's, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I, it, um, I, I definitely encourage like any issues that you could open that kind of like, uh, I mean, I, I don't think it is the case that we think you should, I mean, I, I'm not speaking for the project, but like, um, I think we have a traffic section um, such that you shouldn't have to go down into Istio to do um, at least most of the stuff that you were doing there. So um, it'd be interesting to, to kind of have a, like if you had a sketch of like what what would the API in Knative look like so that it could be orchestrated, I think that would be pretty cool. You can only say no anyway, right? Like um, it doesn't fit. Yeah, two of the demos that I showed you does not use Istio. It's only the tra cool. advanced traffic segmentation and mirroring features for which I was dipping into Istio to do it. And I was actually, you know, following the Knative tutorials a lot. So there are documented you know, integration points between Canada and Istio that I picked up from your Canada tutorials. And I tried to do it in the most idiomatic way that Canada suggests. Mm. Yeah. So uh, the other question that I do have, the obvious question is what are some things you can do to um, improve adoption for Iterate in the Canada community? This is obviously the top, top question in our heads as part of the Iterate project. So any feedback along those lines would also be very welcome. So yeah, check your email. I just sent you one. We we're going to follow oh, up. But OK. Yeah, this is Max. Um, I'm also from IBM, but we'll, we'll also follow up you know, with the community, obviously, with all this. Yep. One question for you is, I mean, this, is, this seems to be a little bit mature work. Um, I was in research. So I'm assuming that this is based on previous work that you had before, or, or this is all for Knative that you did? No, so this is definitely based on previous work before. We have worked with the Istio community, in particular the Kiali uh, section of Istio, to support experimentation. And uh, we've also worked with the KF serving community, which is about you know, serverless inferencing on top of Knative, right? So, and we have some sense of what the community wants in terms of experimentation and release automation tooling. 
So this is based off of that. Uh, we are coming off of that. Uh, Canada seemed like an ideal target for us to go after because these features are not there for Canada. And uh, perhaps we can g gain some traction and interest within this community. Yeah, that's no, superb. Thank you. I have a question on there's time. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Um, so have you talked to customers or users using this in production or have you talked to someone like actually using this in, um, in a customer setting or this is just um, not just but at this point um, only open source work? It's mainly open source. However, we do have users who want to use this in production, right? So in particular, if we are engaging with them in the open, so uh, we are talking to MLOps communities. We're talking to TripAdvisor and Selden who are interested in using Iterate features in production. And uh, the top comment that we have right now is that uh, if there's a way to make this GitOpsy uh, inject, um, you know, experiments in GitOps pipelines, they would be using this today. So that's the kind of feedback that we are getting. And that's definitely a direction that we are planning to head forward to pretty soon. But uh, this is what we have heard so far from users who want to use this in production. We have more, uh, you know, usage in, I would say, non-production and their environments, but for production users, this is what we are hearing. Yeah, so I, I, that, that'll be my, my feedback. I put it in the chat, but like these things are also in, in YouTube and the, everything in the chat is lost, by the way. So um, so it's recorded. Uh, that was my feedback on, on GitOps. And I think Scott also had uh, some comments in terms of pro produ production um, concerns and security. So my recommendation is in the web page or things like that, point out in, in documentation on or implementations of doing GitOps of separation of concerns. I saw like the, the program is doing kubectl commands against itself or using this in a in a cluster that you call the management cluster. And then you have the you have a cluster that is the dev cluster and the cluster is production cluster. Like how is that visibility of the things that you're changing reflected back into Git? So an operations team can can monitor that. Um, so those type of operational concerns and security and Transparency are the things that the next customer does. I'm, I'm consulting with IBM. The customers that we're going to put it, I work in engagements. That's the first thing that I'm going to look at. So if it's not real guidance there, and I have to like dig through the documentation to really find it, um, yeah, less, less adoption. So that's my- Yeah, guess. point taken. I appreciate the comment. But the experiment that I showed you was definitely not a GitOpsy experiment. So just to be very clear, and yeah. you, would, you wouldn't do stuff like kubectl Lapai as part of a GitOps experiment. So that's not how the GitOps integration would look like. Uh, so yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Does the iterate uses eventing also or only serving? Uh, right now it's only serving. Um, we have to learn a little bit more about what it means for Iterate to actually use eventing. All right, I actually want to thank the community for giving us a chance to uh, introduce Iterate to you and uh, hopefully we will keep moving this forward. And thank you so much, uh, Srini, for presenting as well. Uh, I think we have come to the close of our meetup today. We are going to upload this recording uh, to the YouTube channel, so look for it there. And if you have an implementation or an app that is running on Knative, please do consider submitting uh, a demo as well. Uh, we have a form that I can share on the Slack space uh, later. And thank you everybody for coming. And if you haven't filled out the survey that was launched recently, please do so, so we can get some feedback and continue to improve the meetup. And we'll see you next month. Thanks everybody. Cheers.